Hi everybody, my name is Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe and I've been working as a software engineer for over 15 years now and switched to data engineering about like four years ago. And I'm here to tell you all those little things that I picked up along the way. And in today's video, I'll tell you what I would do if I was about to start all over again and trying to land a job in data engineering. And I will try to provide you with some sort of a roadmap so that you can try it too. Hey man! I heard you talking about how to become a data engineer. What does a data engineer actually do? Well, data engineering is some sort of a mixture in between software engineering, DevOps, and some understanding of machine learning. The main job that you have in this profession is to design and build data processing pipelines, try to make everything production ready. So what do I mean by that? If we think about like a super simple data processing pipeline, you have to ingest data from somewhere, then you need to store it in your storage. And after that, usually there is some sort of a transformation step where you need to clean the data and transform it and validate it. And then you need to store it in some other location ready to be used then by, for example, a machine learning model or a dashboard or whatever. And you need to try to automate the whole process as well as make it production ready and introduce things like operational excellence. You need to introduce logging, monitoring, so that you know that if something goes wrong, that you get notified and you can look into it. Hey man, I can't really get this data engineering thing out of my head. Can you please tell me what are the needed skills to be able to work as a data engineer? Well, since data engineering is quite a versatile profession, you need many different skills. For example, you need to know how to properly develop software. So you need to know how to write good quality code that you don't repeat yourself. And also since you need to deploy everything to uh, for example, a cloud provider, you also need a deep understanding about that specific cloud provider or how to deploy services in general and what architectures can be used and um, how to build data pipelines. So you need to know some infrastructure so that you know um, how to deploy your code to the cloud or to a provider to be able to actually run it. And um, also what helps is knowing things like Docker, and Unix or Linux since most uh, services run on Unix or Linux machines. So you need to be able to log into there and also yeah, look around, know where everything is located and how to deploy software to those operating systems. Hey, I was thinking about what you told me about the skills needed to be a data engineer. And I, I just can't understand like what are the, the, the steps that I need to, to, to approach it? Should I do online classes? So what is the best way to go about it? How, how can I learn those skills? Well, some people might give you a list of online classes or courses that you need to do to become a data engineer. In my opinion, you need to actually do something to learn something and you need to face real problems and try to overcome them to actually get experience and learn something. And most of those online courses or classes are kind of linear and every problem is already solved for you. Uh, in my opinion, it's not the, the right approach. Uh, because I have some experience, I was sitting quite often on the other side of the table, uh, interviewing people that want to join the team or that want to join the company. And I often see that many people have done these online classes, but they don't actually have experience. So if you ask them some questions about common problems, then they are not able to answer those and so my approach is different and um, it might have a steeper learning curve but I think that it's worth it in the end. So bear with me for a second. And by the way if you liked the video so far it would be super awesome if you could consider going completely insane on that like button and you could also consider leaving a, a comment down below and tell me your opinion on that topic. My proposal would be to actually come up with a demo project for example, like the one that I mentioned earlier um, about this data pipeline where you have some ingest and then you need to store the data, you need to transform the data and then you need to store the transformed data again. Um, and this would be an optimal, super simple use case to actually have a look at what you need to learn. So 
let's have a look at this process. The most obvious thing would be, okay, we need to write some processing code so that we can transform the data. To be able to do that, you need to probably learn some sort of programming language. Now you could pick basically every programming language, but a programming language that is quite common and popular in the data science and data engineering community is Python. And Python has a big community, lots of good documentation and free tutorials. And so you have lots of resources to learn from. I will link some of them down in the description. With the programming language covered, now you have something that you can run on a piece of data. For example, just pick the uh, Titanic data set and um, now you actually need to deploy it to run somewhere, right? So the next logical way uh, or the next logical thing would be to get familiar with some sort of runtime or cloud provider or whatever. So for this idea, we could use, for example, AWS, which offers uh, free packages where you can play around with it and get familiar with it. So maybe try that and learn only the things that you need to know because AWS is huge and offers many different services, but stick to this problem that you're trying to solve. You want to store data somewhere, you want to transform the data and you need to store it somewhere else, right? And well, just let's use AWS because I'm most familiar with it. You need a storage that is S3 in um, AWS terms, and you need something to run your code on. So that could be maybe a Lambda function, or maybe some sort of Docker instance that you could run, for example, in an ECS cluster. Um, so that would be the next steps to look into. How can I create a Lambda function and execute my code in it? Or how can I create a Docker image with my code and then run it on something like ECS? And AWS has super awesome documentation and there is everything that you need to learn. And I would go step by step. In the first step, I would use the web interface. Even though in one of my last videos, I said never use the web interface, but for getting familiar with it, it's a good idea because if you now also introduce other concepts like uh, infrastructure as code and so on, that would be just too much. So first create everything using the web interface and, and then try to make it run. Try to create a thing that when you copy a file into one S3 bucket, that your, for example, Lambda function is automatically triggered and stores the transform data in another S3 bucket. And that should be a pretty good baseline. And if you have that, then you can build on top of that, right? Because now you are kind of like familiar with um, the services of AWS, you know how AWS works. You're somewhat um, confident in writing Python code, for example. So the next step would be to try to uh, create the resources that you just created with the web interface, uh, to create them with infrastructure as code. For example, using a tool like Terraform, as I have also made a video about um, some time ago. So Terraform is a nice way to create uh, the infrastructure in a cloud provider. That would be the next step. So now you need to learn, okay, how do I create an S3 bucket in Terraform? How do I create and deploy a Lambda function using Terraform? And how do I create those triggers to actually trigger the different steps in the pipeline? And the next step would be to use maybe concepts like uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery to then also automatically uh, provision your code. And whenever you push your code to a repository, for example, GitHub, then your Lambda will be automatically updated with the new and changed code. And you won't have any manual steps anymore in this whole pipeline. And when you go through all those steps, then you actually learn something. I mean, you have to eat shit for some time, right? It won't, it won't be easy. You, you will need to really dig into it. You really ne will need to read documentation. But guess what? Half of my day uh, in, a, in my usual project work, I'm probably reading documentation and trying to solve some sort of problem or um, try to get more familiar with something, right? You really need to be beaten down and be able to get up again and, and do the real work because only that way you will really learn something. And as I said, start, very simple. Um, there are lots of, of demo data sets around. As I said, maybe just take the Titanic data set and then build gradually 
on top of that. And yeah, don't be scared because once you actually have started, all the things will fall into place and will make sense and it will get a lot easier. But try also to only tackle one thing at a time. Don't try to, from the beginning, without knowing anything, start, oh yeah, I will do the programming, then I will instantly create everything using infrastructure as code and also I will do uh, CI, CD and everything. That will be a disaster and you will lose your motivation to actually learn something. Try to start with something simple. Create a transformation script where you, for example, pick the Titanic data set and just, for example, drop a few columns just to have some sort of processing and to have some learning of the Python programming language. Then get this free um, AWS account and just play around with the web interface, try to get familiar with that, especially with the components that you will need for your demo project, for example, S3 buckets and a Lambda function. And then if you have that one running, then you can start to improve and improve and improve uh, and get those more um, complex concepts in place. Hey man, so the things that you just said, I mean, it seems to be super hard. Is it even worth it? Yeah, I know that this approach might be harder than just going through some class, but it will be worth it in the end because it really teaches you something. You will need to learn to overcome problems. You will need to learn to read the documentation. This is something that is essential. So I would really, really encourage you to try that approach. Good things in life are often hard to get and that's some sort of a natural selection. So you really need to push through it and it will be worth it in the end. You need to believe in the process. I hope you got some value out of my experiences and if so, please consider going crazy on that like button, subscribe button and all the other buttons that you can find down there. And don't forget also to leave a comment and tell me um, your thoughts about the topic. So far, see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.